Well, good morning. It's great to have you along today uh, to share in our service. I hope that wherever you are, you feel part of our community at worship uh, and that you'll feel um, some sense of God's presence during this time. Uh, let's pray. God, we give you thanks that we can come together in our homes and in our church to worship you. We pray for your blessing upon us as we share in this time together, wherever we are. So bless and uphold us now in Christ's name. Amen. Well, our uh, series on the book of Job finished last week. And we're beginning a new series now on Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. 2 Corinthians, it's called. Uh, we know that Paul established the church in Corinth, which is um, a town about an hour's drive south of Athens in Greece. He established that church in about the year 50, around there. And then he moved to um, Ephesus, sort of across the Aegean Sea in the west of what we call modern-day Turkey. And he wrote a number of letters to the people in Corinth, um, and only two of them probably survive. Um, so the second letter was written probably about three years after the first one we have, and it's to a community that, uh, one way or another, he's got to know uh, quite well. So Fran is going to read to us, and, uh, and then I'm going to speak about leader. Thanks for it. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 1 to 11. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, including all the saints through Achaia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of the affliction we experienced in Asia, for we were so utterly unbearably crushed that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He who rescued us from so deadly a peril will continue to rescue us. On him we have set our hope that he will rescue us again. As you also join in helping us by your prayers, so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. Well, thanks, friend. Let's pray. May my words and our thoughts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So in our reading today, which um, uh, Paul wrote as his uh, as a second letter to the early church, um, you may have noticed that this word consolation, or it can also mean uh, comfort, is mentioned many times. We're going to explore a little bit about what that word means and it probably doesn't mean what we simply understand to be comfort or consolation. But I've done a bit of a, a survey and I've asked people um, what they think is comfort. How do they define comfort? Now some people I spoke to thought of comfort as a, as a place or a time a nice chair by the fire, 
or on a sunny beach, if we can imagine that in the middle of winter. Uh, some people spoke about comfort in terms of being with people who they knew and who cared about them, who were still fond of you even at times when you perhaps uh, didn't behave so well. Uh, often people spoke about comfort in terms of reading a book or an activity. Uh, and I guess there is some overlap here. Others spoke about comfort in terms of having a break from people, having a time aside, a time alone to do what they would like to do. You know, I can talk about comfort sitting on my kayak on a sunny day. A few weeks ago it was a, it was a lovely day, but that may not be everyone's idea of comfort, especially when you're sitting in a pool of water, perhaps. Um, I was talking about um, going out of my kayak and uh, uh, a person sent me a, a picture of someone sitting on a kayak and underneath the kayak you see this shadow of this huge uh, great white shark. So comfort can be a mindset. Uh, a situation which can seem very comfortable for a while can change quite quickly. Uh, just when you thought things were more or less okay and you were enjoying sitting on the kayak, um, someone tells you that there is a huge shark just uh, a few metres below the surface. I think, though, we are very much in this kind of moment at the moment uh, with the virus. On, on one hand, many of us, especially in New Zealand, uh, live in relative comfort while also knowing that there's a huge amount of human suffering and discomfort in many places in the world. Last week I talked about the, the presence of Leviathan in the book of Job, that sense of unease and even threat, that there are things over which we have no control over, but which we still have to deal with. Well, Paul greets his community in Corinth, and he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in our affliction so that we may be able to console others in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. Uh, the word comfort or consolation, as I mentioned, is uh, a quite a complex word, and it's actually a translation of a Greek word, parakalio. It can mean just what we've been talking about, comfort or consolation. The word parakalio comes from two words, para, close, beside. Uh, we think of paralegal or paramedic, perhaps, and kalio, to call. And so rather than being a word that simply means comfort or <clears throat> consolation in the way that we might understand those, it's much more the idea of calling to your side. The idea of uh, encouraging, strengthening, that's the idea. But there is still very much the sense that calling to your side, that someone is there with you in all you face that you are not alone. So when Paul uses this word again and again, he's not using the word to suggest some kind of sedative or a crutch or a sort of there, there spiritual drug in our ear. It, it is a much stronger word, much closer to being strengthened, fortified by having someone close beside you. So he's saying to this little church in Corinth, on one hand, acknowledging that there are some overwhelming things that they are facing. Remember, this Christian faith is new. They are a tiny minority in a very diverse group in an environment which is probably becoming increasingly more hostile to their presence. And Paul is reminding this community that the only way they can manage the challenges they are facing is together and not alone, alongside one another. 
And together here means not just being together, but also very much the sense that Christ, the risen Christ, is alongside them as well. When Jesus was alive, he talked about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And he used a word very similar to the word that we are talking about this morning, paraclet. A couple of weeks ago I talked um, about, uh, about the four cubic metres, this great pile of steaming compost that turned up in my driveway on a Saturday morning. Uh, some things can seem like that, huge piles, overwhelming, that can end up making us feel a bit inadequate or helpless. And then half a dozen people from our church came with their wheelbarrows and shovels and you know that pile was gone in about an hour. Paracalio, we come alongside one another and the Holy Spirit comes alongside us and somehow we can manage that great pile of compost that's in front of us. So this, the concentration in this text of the word console or paracalio we hear this morning. Paul goes on, who consoles us in all our affliction so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. Now, Paul is making this point very clear, and he clearly thinks it's very important. For just as the suffering of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. Again and again, this word paracalio, Paul is talking about the things that give us strength, and especially strength to face the difficult times, the, the tough times. In one way, we know something about this in our own experiences, and it can be hard to put into words. But just think of that first time, maybe, that you set off on a, on a bike, a bicycle, you took your first pedals alone, or maybe leaving home, or changing jobs, or maybe choosing to be with someone, or maybe to leave someone, or to start a family, or or to leave the country of your birth. We could say in one sense we did all those things on our own, but in another sense we would say that we couldn't have done them without other things or other people being present. The confidence we had gained from experience, the encouragement of a friend or a member of our family, the assurance of someone close to us, the wisdom of someone who has made those choices themselves. This knowledge or experience or belief or person that comes alongside us, that is there who enables us to make the decisions, to face the challenges and to do the right thing. And that's what Paul is talking about. That's what he says that God is like. So this word paracalio, which I've said can be translated in many ways, but Paul uses it in these verses right at the very start of his letter to the people in Corinth. And if we go through the, the list this morning of the ways he uses it, um, and stick with the translation that we read, consolation, think of it how, how it represents this much bigger idea the God of all consolation, we are told. So God not preventing the challenges, not softening, softening the hard times, but alongside us, present always, giving that strength that endures. Paul says, who consoles us in our affliction so that we may be able to console those who are in affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. So we learn here from Paul that the very thing that has enabled us to get through the tough times, that God alongside us, is also a learning thing for us and something that we can share with others. So every time we overcome a tough time, 
we gain a particular kind of knowledge that enables us to help others get through their hard times. It's not a theoretical idea. Jesus talked about the coming, as I said, of the paraclete. It's the same root word of being with us when he is no longer there. I know what it's like, and it's not easy, but this is what helped me get through. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. You know, on one hand, we hold, um, hold up the glorified and risen Jesus. But on the other hand, we are also aware of the tortured and crucified innocent Son of God. And these are the two sides to the same coin, the two sides to the one affirmation. Jesus with us in the worst times and giving us the paracalio, the consolation, the strengthening, the deep confidence and assurance of resurrection faith. If we have been afflicted, it is your, for your consolation and salvation, Paul says. If you have been consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. So we, we join with Paul today. We join in with this tiny, anxious church who joined in Corinth to worship the risen Christ. And we find in these words the same thing that that community found, the things that helped them endure what they faced. That we are not powerless. The situation or challenges we face are never hopeless. That there is one with us and for us knowing what we are going through, coming alongside in the presence of others, in the wisdom of experience, in the deep discovery and the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing the truth of the words we discover in Scripture. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you, he will never leave you, nor forsake you. Amen. Let's pray. God, we give thanks that you do come alongside us. In the presence of friends and family. In the presence of people from our church. In the presence of wisdom and knowledge and experience. In those times when we feel the closeness of your spirit. We give thanks that we are never left alone to endure. That you are our guide and our help. We pray for all those going through difficult times today. And we pray that they will experience your consolation, your presence, your being alongside them. So bless us all and uphold us now as we move on from this day. In Christ's name. Amen. Well, it's been great to have you along this morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, I wish you God's grace. Um, and I wish you uh, the experience of God alongside you as you face the challenges that you and we all face. Bless and uphold you now. In Jesus' name. Amen.